Hey everybody, this is our next Brow Edit tutorial. This tutorial deals with applying effects and using them in game. So I'm sure many of you are curious how does how do those mappers out there implement cool torch effects or you know it looks like magical rings or flying bats you or even just anything in general. How do they do that? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that and give you the idea of how to do it, implement it, and then just use it accordingly to any other possible effect you would like. So over here you could see I just built a very basic map, just a little courtyard or you, you can call it, and just with a variety of different objects here. We have like a metallic torch of some kind, and another torch, like a wooden torch, some kind of flying crystal, and the Niflum witch statue. Now in each of these cases I'm going to show you how effects are applied to them. So before I get to that let me just show you what I did. The first thing you do here is we actually apply a light source right on each torch, torch to give you the illusion that light is actually projected off the effect that we're going to be using which is actually a torch effect. Over here we have a little bluish glow light coming from this crystal which will actually look quite nicely with our uh, our next our magical ring effect and following over here I didn't really do anything to it because it's not really needed since we're going to be using something called flying bats and that sort of thing. So before you, before you move on make sure you build yourself a basic layout of a map. You can apply lights if you want. I'd recommend you do that because that's what I'm going to be talking about later on but when you're ready we can move on. Alright so now that you have your map ready let's take a look at the effect function. So go to edit mode and choose effects. Now over here you could see that we have the effect number 47 which equals torch which is the same thing here and here's another effect ice cave level which is effect number 650. If And you can see a bunch of other effects here. To select an effect and view its properties just click it, left click it, you'll see, a little, you'll see, you'll see it actually highlight red which means you've selected it and then hit enter. Now you can see some properties here. Of course you have your x, y, and z uh, position, the scale of the effect, how big it's going to be, and any other any rotation which is not really important, and then the vital the vital course of it is the loop time, so the playback of the effect, which is extremely important. So and you can see that they actually differ. See this one is ridiculously large. What what you see here is actually um, this is the one little tip you could do instead of typing in the actual effect loop time that you would like to put, just put in a ridiculously large number like 1 billion or 1 trillion and it actually defaults it to its proper effect level which is kind of neat. That way you can never go wrong. But that's just one trick to it. And you can see over here this effect has different loops times with different rotation and scales and so forth. So how do I actually get to this? How do I actually implement this? Well there's actually an effect list built in Browdit. So go to effects, the effects category navigational bar up here and then you'll see categories effects 0 to 33 gives you a bunch of different effect numbers with their appropriate labels so you know exactly what it is and you can just scroll through whatever you want so for the torch what I did was you can go through effect 34 to 67 choose torch I've selected torch now how to actually paste it hold any control so the control button your left control your right control whatever you want and then at the same time click left, the left mouse button, and you'll see it paste. There's your effect. It's very basic, nothing's filled in. 40 is a default loop time. You will need to change that, of course, but now that you have an effect in, you can click it and drag it around. To raise it or lower it, hold control, hold left click, mouse button, and then move your mouse up and down like a dragon fashion, and you'll see it move. Okay? Now, the first thing you got to consider with effects is placements. So every effect you could see has a different placement which is kinda pr actually pretty important when you actually implement it. So if you look over here you'll see an effect right there which produces a, a torch but really the torch is really being produced right above the nozzle here. So why would you put the effect down there? That's just how the label works and you need to know that. And to, to get an idea or a reference highly recommend you refer to gravity maps and that's really your basis of getting a great reference to what effects you would like to choose and how to implement them as well as knowing what properties to implement as well. So let's see, let's see a, good, a good map to choose. Let's see where one of these torches. Go to file, open from GRF, and then type in uh, Sphinx. So SP is good enough. Choose any Sphinx map and then 
while we're still on effect edit mode, make sure we can still, we're still on it, you should be able to see all the effects. Hold, uh, just click O, you'll see all the objects being pasted and rendered, and now you can see how they're placed. And just copy the same fashion. So if you click this, you see its properties, just refer to this, click tab, because right now we're multitasking with maps, click the effect you like to type in, and then just type in, and then just type in the, uh, the actual loop time and properties. Very important, very, I cannot stress this enough, when you ever implement an effect, an effect and you want to add uh, values to the property menu, make sure that whenever you type in a value, so if I, let's just say I put 127, make sure you hit enter. If you just, if you don't click enter and just hit OK, the effect value will not save. It's back to 125. So what you need to do is click it, type in the value, click enter while it's still selected on that on that bar in that value box and then hit it, OK. And then you click enter again on it, you'll see it's been edited pr properly. And you could, you could also just save your progress as you keep going, right? Always, always keep saving your progress on your map. You don't want to go wrong and get a massive error, then you have to redo everything. Now, effects are, are pretty timely in terms of actually getting each one ready. So, you know, writing in each value, you know, let's say this one was 120, 15, enter, you know, 25 here, enter, and then doing that for every single one, it takes a very long time, right? So how can we minimize the time it takes to implement an effect? Very easy. Let's just say I had 15 torches. If I had 15 torches manually editing it, it would take a very long time. So why not we use the built-in copy and paste function that Browdit supports? Please use it, okay? It'll make your life so much better. So select edit mode, global height edit, and then highlight the area where your effect is actually in. So we know the effect is in there, so I just highlight it and let go by you know holding left click and then dragging your mouse. So now this area is selected. Click the letter C and then just deselect all the boxes that you don't want, which of course everything else but the effects. Right? Sometimes this might air, sometimes it won't, it all depends. And then hit OK. Now you see this little highlighted box that's dragging around. Now if I click it right there, the effect will be drawn in that area. So if I click effects edit mode, there's a torch. And you'll see that all the values are already filled out for you. Well, that one's actually the one I made myself, but you can see the value is, is filled out for you, and the best part about it is that it's actually placed on the ground at, a sp at the specific coordinates you want. So notice how that the height of this effect is identical to the height of this effect when you vary it to the origin and the height of your ground. So that saves you a lot of time. And you can just drag this around wherever you want. So again, 15, right? We'll just do the same thing. Highlight that area of an effect, copy, right? Just select all the boxes you wish, just like this, and then paste it in the same vicinity. And if you do it again, because there's not, now that there's two effects in there, what does copying two effects give you? You now have four. So everything is actually multiplied by a factor of two. So if I do the same thing, continuing it, I would get four effects. If I copy it again, I get eight effects. If I copy it again, 16, then 32, then 64, and you know it just gets bigger and bigger. Oh, I'm not even on effect edit. Uh, there we go. So now if I go like this, you see that, oh wait, it's not selected. Well, it is. It just says it's hiding behind there. Just drag it out. See that? Look at all that. Four effects, no work, all copied and pasted. Okay? And that saves you a lot of work. So, if, and if you ever want to refer to effects, like up here and whatnot, these are actually also copied and pasted. And to do that, I just went to the Niflo map. Knowing your maps is very important. You want to know where effects are. Just go to where, wherever this area is, right? Niflum bat fast, whatever it is. Just global height edit that. Select the, the area that has the effects in it. Same thing. Just copy. And make sure you select the values that only applies to the effects. Everything else we do not need. Right, click tab. You'll see this black box. That just means that that's the area I selected. Just left click to paste it. And back to effects edit mode. And look at that all the effects all ready and filled out and ready to go. Okay? Alright, so that's actually how you implement effects. Very simple, not hard, 
pretty easy to do. There's a couple other things you should be you should notice. When you implement uh, uh, different types of effects, they're not as used. So, for example, if we went to the uh, endless tower map, so if we went to one at tower, it's a little different. You'll find that there's effects on the walls. And these, if you notice in game, they're quite small, right? Just ignore the loop time and these properties. They're quite small. If you were to just duplicate this effect by you know, choosing the effect in the effect list according to the number given here, which is 690, and filling in all the values, you will not get the same thing. It's kind of weird. Even though you have the same values filled in, the effect looks different in terms of size. So how do you go around that? How do you get it exactly to what you want? Just copy and paste it with global height edit, you'll get, and it'll be identical to what you ever wanted. All right. So do not do not uh, forget that. If your if your effect is not produced properly, if you copy the values, just global height, copy and paste, and that's it. All done. So that's that's actually how you produce effects. So now, what about if we're in game? So over here, you can see the effects in action. You can see the two torches. I'm sorry if it's a little laggy. I don't know why it's like this, but. Camtasia seems to be acting pretty weird. And you'll see the effects in action, right? See the little ring I chose, you'll see the flying bats, I can walk around, and you'll see your effects in action. Alright? So that's pretty much effects right there. And you know what? There's a whole variety of them out there. You know, you can go to, I don't know, any map you choose. We can go to airplane if we want to. If there's any effects in this, surprisingly enough, there isn't. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. You can go to a variety of maps, choose the effect which you want, copy and paste it, use it in your map, and you're good to go. All right. So hopefully that gets things sorted out, giving you a good basis of using effects. And next time we'll be talking about using sounds and uh, using the sound editing feature and actually implementing sounds in your map. Okay. Well, take care, guys, and good luck mapping.